trigger on, uh, on Libya and Syria, and then uh, along comes 80% uh, of Americans uh, disapproving uh, of doing that. Well, these are libertarian positions, so we're not winning any elections, uh, but um, the positions that we've been espousing are rapidly advancing. Uh, I would also like to point out that during the last election, uh, I'd like to point out the website isidewith.com. Many of you probably got online, uh, answered the 36 questions that were asked of you, and then at the end of that uh, exercise, you got paired up with the presidential candidate most in line with your views. Um, I was the next president of the United States based on three and a half million people taking that survey. So it is important that we get our message out there and when people uh, recognize that that message actually is uh, reflective of most Americans, uh, I mean, this is the point that we're at, I think, as a party. We're, we're virtually at a tipping point. I would also like to point out that we are suing we, the uh, Our America initiative, is suing the Presidential Debates Commission uh, to be able to uh, get in the debates if, in fact, uh, you were on the ballot in enough states to actually uh, win the presidential race. So uh, if, if you potentially can get enough electoral votes, 270 electoral votes plus, then you should be included in the debates, which I think uh, is a game changer, and I think that um, looking at this from any angle whatsoever, that it's really fair. Uh, so uh, we're engaged in this. Uh, right now we're trying to raise the amount of money to be able to uh, follow through on this, but um, uh, this is where we're at. So uh, not, not idly sitting by, uh, not... Um, not repeating uh, things that don't work. For me, uh, over the last uh, five years, four of those years running for President of the United States, it turns out that 90% of the time that I spent doing that ended up to be a wasted time. Well, at the time, you know, you could say that in retrospect. So uh, right now, going forward, uh, I'm not repeating any of the 90% expecting different results where honing in on what we know works, and, um, and it is. Uh, I go to New York City, I get to end up talking to all the major media outlets. Uh, arguably, I end up uh, getting to uh, talk to tens of millions of people, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, not doing that. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, a couple of weeks ago, requested that I be on his show. It turns out that the request was uh, uh, on a Saturday afternoon, and there was no way that I could physically get to a studio in the time that they had allotted, but that, had, that has never happened to this point. So, uh, media right now is hungry for the libertarian perspective and pointing out the obvious. Uh, right now, the media is uh, labeling libertarians as libertarian slash republican, uh, slash uh, Tea Party slash conservative. Well, that's not libertarian. And uh, who's the spokesperson uh, to, to be able to rebut that? Well, by default, it's me having been the presidential nominee during the last cycle. And I relish the opportunity to be able to clarify that libertarians are flaming liberals when it comes to civil liberties. And uh, fiscally, we're as responsible or more responsible than. Uh, uh, than certainly the two parties that have us in the situation that we're in today. So uh, with that, uh, I, I, would, I, I understand this to be a question-answer uh, insult session, too. So uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, do this one at a time. Special? Yeah, you're going to have to go through the computer. Or go ahead and ask it, and then we'll hear it. I can hear you. Yes, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Serge out the Libertarian National Committee. <coughs> um, I want to first off, I thank you, Wes, that I did object to the last campaign for your work out there on the campaign trail. Since then, continuing to promote the Libertarian Party and advance the okay. Now I got the mic, that's probably better. I um, wanted to thank you for your work on the campaign trail and, and for continuing to work to promote freedom since you've run. Uh, I don't know if you're going to run again at this point. You're probably not wanting to say right now necessarily, but 
One concern uh, that I had kind of uh, from the last campaign going forward that if you decide to run again, that, that I hope could be done a little bit differently is transparency of how campaign money is spent, making sure you're not going to debt. Um, there is a huge payment, at least to one individual on your campaign, of hundreds of thousands of dollars, I understand. And I, I don't think we can afford in the, in the freedom movement with our limited resources to be paying staffers that much money. Um, you know, if, if, if you do for some reason want to pay somebody that much money, you know, I think it should be transparent. Who is that, who is that person that you said got paid that amount of money? Uh, from my understanding, and maybe you can correct me on this, for, uh, Ron Nielsen. So, so let me let me clarify something here, uh, and that is whatever was paid Ron uh, is probably uh, about three hundred fifty thousand dollars short of what uh, uh, he was actually owed. So Ron ends up out of pocket on this whole thing at this point, uh, probably about three hundred thousand dollars, just for what that's worth. So that amount of money was paid to Ron. Um, his goods and services that were delivered were far beyond uh, what was paid. And I, I have to tell you, um, we pinch pennies during, and continue to pinch pennies during this whole thing. No, nobody made any money. Uh, we, we lost money on this endeavor, and Ron Nielsen personally lost more money on this endeavor than anyone else. But you just said he came out 300000 and had it. I understand why you lost money on that. In other words, his billings were, and, 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 I, and, and I, um, I, I'm, I'm not giving you accurate numbers, but his billings were, let's say, 600, and, um, and we ended up being able to pay him 300. I mean, this is all the, this is not one person, this is, uh, this is the entire st uh, staff that you pay Ron Nielsen as a company and then he pays out the entire staff. So his billings were 600 grand and we were able to pay him 300 grand. So he's, you know, he, he's, he's out more than any other single individual on the last uh, presidential election. So that money didn't just go to him, that was the whole staff, in other words. I, I got you then, if that's the case. We're just looking for transparency and that kind of stuff, I think is, is mostly what I'm trying to say here. Thank you, sir. Any other Thanks. questions? Any other questions for the governor? No. Governor Johnson, uh, it's a pleasure to see you again. We had you speak at George Washington University uh, last year. It was a very well attended event. Uh, you have done a great job uh, as far as the Libertarian Party candidates of mobilizing the youth. Uh, we were very happy uh, just in January to charter the California College Libertarians Group. And I was hoping to hear some advice you have for us on how we can activate more young uh, liberty activists. I don't see, you know, we're, we're all plugging away, and, uh, and that's part of my call, too, is uh, I, I think we need to, you know, we're not winning any elections, but we need to pat ourselves on the back uh, for the fact that uh, libertarian registration is growing. Uh, uh, in lieu of, uh, of uh, declines in the major parties, we're, we're growing significantly. So this is uh, where it's at. And uh, looking forward, I, I think that this uh, lawsuit against the Presidential Debate Commission, that if it's successful, is a real game changer. Uh, and uh, so that, that's the avenue that we're pursuing. I know that all of you are pursuing your own angles and uh, and, and, you know, on, on one side, gee, it's not getting to where it should be, but on the other side, you know, come on, let's, let's step back and look at what has happened, and we, we really do deserve some credit.